Italy is in crisis mode yet again. The country has been grappling with massive levels of debt, their inability to pay back, and the austerity that will ultimately be used to make up for the shortfall. It's obviously going to fail. Are you ready? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the situation in Italy. Let's begin. Italy's president calls national elections as country grapples with economic pain. This has been going on for years, and there have been no resolutions. The countdown to Europe's next pivotal election began on Thursday when Italy's president dissolved the parliament and effectively opened the campaign for the first national election in five years. What we have here is a situation that has occurred in several countries around the world. Dissolving the parliament does occur. But this is a country that has had so many different leaderships, and they have been, unfortunately, the recipient of massive levels of corruption, massive levels of debt, and a situation that has only escalated since they decided that they need to fix the problem. So, we have a little issue here going on with Italy. They have been a victim of the bankers and their plans, and the suggestion to fix all of these issues has simply been more debt, more deficits, and a worsening economic outlook. That's not good because this country owns a lot of debt of other countries in Europe and other countries in Europe own a lot of their debt. So we have a very, very dangerous line that's being walked on right now. And this has to be monitored very carefully. The ECB is looking into it. The ECB is monitoring everything that's been happening. All the financials, they've been sticking their nose in, of course. The EU has been making their presence known. And the ECB has been buying up all the debt of these corporations within Italy and other countries. And to no avail, this has not resolved the problem. Because, of course, it's not supposed to. So let's look further into this. Cumulative change in GDP. Now we know that the GDP numbers are falsified. We've seen, particularly in Europe, how they admittedly include things that are part of illicit conduct, illegal, illegal activities, and yet, still, they're allowed to include it. But even with all of that, this is still dismal. Look at what has happened over the past few years in Italy. Sure, it's somewhat climbing recently, but we're talking about a situation in Europe, in the EU, where we have a massive level of deflation. And some would argue me on that point. However, without the ECB printing, the entire market would fall apart. Now, I think that would be a great thing because it could be restored quickly. The way they're doing it now, it's not good. If you let it all crash, then we can have a real economy coming in. We can have a beneficial outlook. It would be good for everybody in the longer term. But this way, you just drag it and drag it and drag it. And what do they do? Well, they have somehow figured out a way to collapse an entire system without having anybody freak out along the way. It's like the frog in the boiling hot water. They've used this model. And they've been transferring assets from the governments to the elite. And it has worked very, very well because people are loving it. They're loving what's happening today. You can see it. Changes in holdings in Italian government securities by investor type, okay? The only group that has been buying off the garbage debt 
in Italy is the ECB. The ECB is the only one buying up their debt. Why? Because they know it's a failure, it's a fraud, and it's a joke. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants to touch it with a 10-foot pole. And yet, the ECB has to be there to say, all right, well, fine, I'll do it. They don't have a choice. The ECB, the ECB is buying up every last piece of toxic garbage. This happens to be just one of them. Real investors don't want it. And you see the yield on it. You would think with a country with so much risk that there would be excellent yield and that would basically draw in investors, but that's not happening. There is no yield. Many cases in Europe, we're talking about massive quantities. I, I covered it recently, but of actual negative rate. They're giving you less than you put in. What kind of investment is that? It's a joke. It's a joke. All right, so a few years ago, the name of the game was austerity. A lot of people like austerity because they say, look, why do all those people deserve all of that stuff, whatever it might be, take it away from them and make everything fine again? Well, I believe this was back from uh, 2011 from Italy, the austerity package foresees 60 billion euros in savings from a mixture of spending cuts and tax rises with the aim of balancing the budget by 2014. Here we are approaching 2018, and that hasn't been resolved. So we're looking at, let's say about seven years. Seven years to fix the problem you said would take three years, and no resolve. All right, this is what they wanted to do, all right? Increase in the VAT from 20 to 21%, increase in fuel prices, sales of state property. Now, some may suggest that that would be a good thing. Maybe we should let the private companies take over certain aspects, and this would be beneficial, less burden on the people, and basically overall savings. You could argue that, right? But look at what's happened, for example, in Greece, and this is what worries me. You have a situation where they're basically selling off the islands, selling off infrastructure, selling off airports, and somebody is making some serious cash off of it. And then at the same time, the government themselves are left with nothing. They have no way to generate revenue. And that's not good either. So you have to see both sides of it. What I'm seeing ultimately is the transition from state assets to assets that become part of the elite structure you and i don't buy airports all right if we're lucky enough we buy stocks and bonds right that's the average person but it's not really happening like that you can see that ultimately people just keep getting the short end of the stick a freeze on public sector salaries until 2014 you know that could be a good thing the retirement age basically increasing and measures to fight tax evasion will be strengthened, including a limit of 2,500 euros on cash transactions, capital controls, increased taxation, and ultimate the, the ultimately having more and more austerity on the people. It's not going to result in a beneficial economy. It's not going to result in an improvement in any way, shape, or form, yet they do it anyway. Why? Because they're not in favor of you getting wealthier. They're not in favor of you being able to pay your bills. They want you to be a sucker. They want you to be subdued and to be subservient and to be on your knees in front of your government building, begging and pleading for resolution. I'll tell you right now, it's not coming. New Italian government does not include a single elected politician. This was back in 2011. You remember Mario Monti, Italy's new prime minister, appointed a government without a single politician forming a technical administration. Think about that for a moment. When you have a government fully formed from technocratic elite they decide the rules but you went to the ballot box and you voted him in right no no voting no elections 
they were appointed and you didn't get to say anything in the matter at all. How does that sound? Look at all the different leaders that Italy has had over the course of the years. This begins in 1945 up until present. And some of these have been so short. They have been undergoing new leadership all the time. And there's no way that a new leader is ever going to resolve the crisis when the underlying structure is rotten. Again, a similar issue occurred in Greece. Lucas Papademos, a respected economist and the former vice president of the ECB. He was leading Greece for a short period of time. Appointed to lead Greece. The ECB vice president. If that's not corruption, if that isn't some sort of insider deals that are happening, I don't know what is. You as the individual, if you were living in Greece, you couldn't choose that. You couldn't vote on that. You couldn't decide anything to do with that. And nobody of your representatives, they couldn't decide it either. They were appointed positions. And this is what happens. This is why Europe will fall. This is why all governments will fall. Because they are subject to the elite. And people don't realize that. All they see is the names and faces on television, in the newspapers, in their articles that they read. And they do not understand what is underlying all of this. And I am here to bring you the truth. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. In The Money GPS, I actually got into the situations that were taking place with the Euroviral contagion. I touched on that in my newer release as well. So these would definitely uh, be uh, coinciding with all this material today. That's all. Take care.